Well, it's a joy to see everyone here. Thank you all for coming. It's wonderful to see you. I'm so honored to be here. And I brought you a little picture to laugh, make you laugh. I have 10 copies. Just spread them around. The topic is who's in the driver's seat. Just pass them on. And this is what we used on the program folder before. It's like, there's a dog in the driver's seat. It's a picture for you. Our best friend. See? I want to show the camera. You got that? The dog. Here's some more. Here. Here, here, here. Well, this is an important topic, I think, because it actually deals with consciousness. You know, who's in the driver's seat? What inner voice are you listening to? That is a matter of the consciousness that dwells in you. What are you listening to? How do you choose which impulse to inf which impulse to to follow? Which which influence to follow? How do you choose? First, there's the conscience. That's that's not even a, even a very metaphysical idea. Everybody's heard of conscience, right? <coughs> Symbolized by who? Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but no, it's familiar to mainstream thought. And a, a, a quotation from uh, Charles Fillmore, who's the founder of Unity, he says, whoever has felt the prick of conscience has been spoken to by the Holy Spirit. Whoever has sat at the feet of his own inner convictions has been aware of God's presence. God, your higher self, speaking to you and calling you higher. So the idea that fascinates us is the, how we have this lower nature and higher nature. And uh, when we cease to believe in our separateness, you see, that inner monitor called accusing conscience uh, is dissolved forever. Do you believe that? I think you can backslide, actually. <laughs> you know, but um, the idea that fascinates is how we have this higher, lower nature, and this is the dilemma that we face today. Who am I? What is the driving force of my life? Well, I say for most people, it's our instincts, our instinctual nature. We have instincts, right? We've evolved over thousands of years. Now, with my dog, Hoppy, his instinctual nature is to bark at people. <laughs> Anyone who shows up, he barks at. So I was trying to teach him not to bark. So he was sitting beside me on the, on the seat of the car, and I was saying to him, now, Hoppy, you know, you don't need to bark because everyone is our friend. And I have this fantasy, I think, that he understands talking. And he, he turned his face up to me with his big brown eyes, and he looked at me like he was saying, really? And I said it again. I said, yes, honey, you don't have to bark because everyone is our friend. And his eyes opened wide, his pupils dilated. It was looked like he was thinking, oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> and I felt like I was his guru. I'm my dog's guru. I might not be a people guru, but I'm my dog's guru. <laughs> so we tend to think that we have many projections of identity that uh, can take over our will. Like we have an ego, and we have the Christ spirit, and we have our Enneagram personality type, and we have our Myers-Briggs personality type, and we have our astrological type, and our higher self, and our lower self, our self-consciousness, our person personal consciousness, 
And as we grow in spiritual maturity, you see, those boundaries between which all these types that can take over our will, we think, they become more and more faint until they finally dissolve in one unified self. And that's a beautiful thing. I mean, that's, I'm kind of waiting for that because, <laughs> because uh, just to be, just to be a flow of a unified spiritual presence. That's a good thing to have in the driver's seat. As we grow spiritually, um, we realize this, there's a paradox of survival. As I said, the instinct, the instinctual nature that governs us is um, the instinct to survive in humans. This is how I would describe it by prevailing over the other guy, right? It's an adversarial paradigm. It's evolved over thousands and thousands of years. And we have become very efficient now, very effective at being able to outwit, <laughs> being able to get ours over the other guy. Our survival now, though, depends on outwitting our own survival instincts. You get that paradox? I mean, we we have to act on empathy now and compassion, our caring for the greater good. And there are so many ideas that converge in that. I mean, all the areas of society like engineering and science and medicine and politics are starting to expand into realizing that we have to cooperate if we're going to survive. When you grasp the power that you have to be intuitively wise and caring, to use your heart intelligence and see beyond appearances, then you begin to create a goodness in the world that is truly of God. You're no longer living as a mere mortal, no longer plagued, plagued by the dramas and dilemmas and difficulties of an ignorant state of consciousness. Metaphysicians say that there is only one mistake or sin, and that is the belief in separation. That is believing that you are separate from God. You can never be separate from the divine. We only need to recognize what we have allowed ourselves to accept as limited ideas. And I, I want to use as an example of that the Ash Wednesday ritual of the Catholic Church. I never understood how sacred that was until uh, a, a unity minister had, who had grown up Catholic did an Ash Wednesday ritual. And I, I, was, I was able to see, as she explained, when she put the ash on our forehead, it symbolized, you know, here in the forebrain is where we have all our creative thought, where, we, where we're, we're existing really in the realm of our experiential dramatic uh, meanings. And when we pull back the energy that we have invested in those things, illusions really, when we pull that out, what's left is just the ash, the ash of the remnants of the form of those illusory thoughts, those illusory realities. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. You pull, the, pull it back and then it collapses and there's nothing left but ash on your forehead. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. I love that. That's really taking control. That's really taking the reins of your life and stepping back from the illusions of separation and drama and limitation that we sometimes get caught up in. Now, when we retract ourselves from that acceptance to be released from any negative condition, mm -hmm. it's kind of like... Um, using, you know, replacing a negative idea with a positive idea, an affirmation. Uh, and I'm sorry to drag you through unity theology with denials and affirmations, but 
I'm gonna do it, okay. <laughs> so, uh, the, 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 what, like here's an example of that. So, do you remember the children that I brought over here to the Coptic Youth Fellowship, the Alvarez children? Their, their parents are from, or their grandmother is from Costa Rica. Their parents actually are deaf, both mother and father. And these deaf parents who speak, you know, sign language and, and function very well in society, have good jobs. They have three children who hear, who are hearing children. And I brought them over here to the Coptic Fellowship activities and they had a wonderful time with that. And um, now their parents got a job in California and they're leaving. They were leaving, and it felt so painful for them to go, pick up stakes and go. So they're leaving, and we don't like that. But what we have to know, the truth that we have to know, is that they are always in the right place at the right time for their highest good. And when we affirm that, when we place ourselves in the affirmative word of truth, then we mobilize all of the energies and powers of the universe to, to give us momentum and blessing and safety and thriving. So there's two, there's two affirmations that I would just like to share with you that just really do that, that mobilize the forces of spiritual power within us. So this is one for circumstances goes, all things are working together for the highest good, and I am working with them in the wisdom and power of spirit. That just draws your guidance out, draws guidance to you. You just, you align yourself with the highest, the highest good, the divine plan. And then here's a good one for healing. Mighty currents of God's healing love flow through me now making me whole, strong, and well. If you just live in that awareness, I'll say it again, mighty currents of God's healing love flow through me now, making me whole, strong, and well. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Oh, good, amen. good, good. Okay, so, but I want to acknowledge how difficult how much of a struggle it is to align our will with the divine will. I once sat in a clench for three days. I mean, I, I was just sitting in, and I couldn't move. I couldn't go. I couldn't get up or sit down or leave or stay because I was trying to, I thought I should leave a relationship, but I didn't want to cause the other person pain. And I sat that way in that struggle for three days in a clinch. That was painful. That's how hard it is to manage our will, to manage all these different influences that would be in the driver's seat of our life. And, and an anxiety attack is really a clash of wills within us that just leaves a person immobilized. How many have experienced that? It's a psychological situation. I mean, spiritual leaders hold the opinion that psychologists and religion, or psychology and religion, are close partners in the needs of people. Indeed, religion was the first psychology we had. But our inner struggle of which will will prevail is a spiritual challenge. I say one answer is found in the words of Jesus. If any man would follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know. And what does that cross represent? It, it just represents the determination, the determination to stand in spiritual truth. Jesus says, not my will, but thine be done. We will find that if we can let go, if we can just step away and disengage from the matter at hand, we'll be able to sense the presence of the divine in every situation. 
That's why the Buddhists have the song, Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. We should sing that, you know, to soften our will, to remind ourselves that we need to flow, we need to feel the flow and release our own attachment. There's always something to learn, something that will bless us and contribute to our depth of understanding in every situation. There's always something that will contribute to our depth of compassion in every experience. Always. Do you realize what that means? That means that everything that has ever happened to you can, can be considered a blessing. And indeed, until you can see things that way, you are living to some degree in negativity. Deepak Chopra tells us everything that happens to us happens for the same reason, to bring us to a higher state of consciousness. To reach that higher state of consciousness, our work is simply to let our will soften and coalesce with the divine presence that breathes through everything. Our spiritual journey is the journey of learning to listen. Listen to the still small voice that knows our deepest heart, that knows our highest destiny, that knows our greatest good. So I just want to offer you a poem that I wrote about that when I reached a place in my life where I wasn't a mother anymore and I had an empty nest and I didn't know what to do next. And I call it a pilgrim's prayer because a pilgrim is on a journey to find God, you know, to find truth. So it goes like this. Lord, what shall I do? Keep the freedom to follow a wordless whisper. Listen to the music of the spheres and dance to it. Keep the high holy place in view and always work for the vision. Bring everyone else along and help them with their vision. Invite the angels to do their work and incorporate you. Like optic lenses clicking into place, we will all come together in a startlingly clear holy city. The end. So, you can rise above any condition and transform any difficulty. Claim your power to decree the love and fulfillment of divine mind. Transcend the instinctual nature of the Adam and Eve consciousness. And grasp, take up the new life that is free from suffering and despair of the mortal existence as you find that stream of spiritual strength, you will fulfill your destiny and you will know the true meaning of ascension. Amen. Thank you.